Hi, Anthony Parent of Parent and Parent LLP IRS Medic. And wow, we have had an exciting week since the news uh, out of Belgium dropped that uh, FATCA is uh, no, 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 no go there for uh, in uh, in Belgium because it violates the GT GDPR. So we've had some fascinating, fascinating reactions. Uh, surprising. We're going to hit those first before we get to your FR uh, question and answer session. Just a few things because this is just way too interesting uh, to let go. Uh, joining me today is Keith Redman and John Richardson to help us out through this enjoyable, enjoyable day this Thursday. I've been looking forward to today. Um, with everything that's going on. Now, I want to introduce uh, my guests, and we'll do that with this tweet. I want to get up, let me do a little my screen share here and get up something that came up. Uh, I think this is a great introduction today. This was something that uh, we all saw on Twitter um, that was uh, just, just amazing. So this tweet right here. I will uh, open this up with John Richardson. John, I want to hear your reaction to this tweet. What did I say that's false? And as a U.S. citizen, I expect all U.S. citizens to comply with the law. Law. Sorry if I do not think being a criminal is okay. You must also think drunk driving is okay, too. How about rape and murder? Are those crimes okay? So to give a little context to this, this is a, a, a CPA who's claiming that uh, FACA is a great law uh, because it's making all these criminals overseas uh, comply with the law. So, John, what's your reaction to this tweet? I'm not sure what what it was a response to, but I mean, I guess my reaction is it's probably going to hurt her business. Uh, you know, if, if she's trying to get a clientele who are affected by this. Um, well, uh, sorry, I think she, she utterly, at a bare minimum, she doesn't understand what citizenship taxation is. Yeah. Uh, she seems to think she's confusing it with worldwide taxation in her head, right? But what I think is going on in her head, to be fair, is she's imagining U.S. residents with bank accounts and businesses and investments outside the United States. Yes, and I did see that in a follow-up. She did have a follow-up tweet that didn't... Is didn't that come. right? Yeah, I mean, that, that, that would be my assumption because, I mean, the content of it is just so, you know, utterly outrageous. Um, I think I mean, I think you're... That, but what yeah. she clearly does not understand is that U.S. citizenship taxation is not about the taxation of U.S. residents, but imposing U.S. worldwide taxation on people who don't even live in the United States. So what she's really saying is that, hey, come on, step up, everybody. Uh, you know, anybody living outside the United States who doesn't comply with U.S. laws is a criminal. You know, that's really what she says. Right? <laughs> Keith, what do you say to this? What do I say to this? Well, I'm not surprised. She's not the first one to go down that route, even though she's quite drastic with the rapist, et cetera. Yeah, that's a little much. But I, I, I think, you know, with due respect to John, and I mean that sincerely, I think John's being very gracious. I think she understands fully what is at stake here, and she just doesn't get it. I think it, she just doesn't understand. I mean, there have been a number of responses toward her explaining the situation, but she still sticks to not only that Americans overseas who do not adhere to this and other people who are associated with, you know, other people who are associated with this citizenship based taxation, that they're criminal. And she did even say in one tweet that they are at risk of going to jail. Yeah. So well, it really you know is you know over the top. Yeah. Thank you for that, Keith, because it's exactly what my problem with is as in, you know, we have a lot of people who call us because they have problems with their, their tax compliance and um, the amount of angst that yeah. people like this. And I'm sorry, you're, you're creating a fear. You're creating a fear environment. And in that fear environment, people, it's hard for people to understand the truth when you're shouting fear at them. And so what happens and this is this is the common this is the. This is the trend for 2023. People contact us and they're ready to go nuclear. Like, oh my God, I'm going to just leave everything behind and burn down the world because I didn't do this and this and, and I don't want to go to jail. And they're running around crazy. And, and, and we get down to their issue. And we find out it's a really small issue. It's not a big deal that we can fix this. It's not a big deal. But the fear in their mind constantly constantly they're worried they're paranoid and that's the thing once you create that fear environment it's really hard to back that off and that's really the problem with this because now you have a client that is in absolute fear and panic 
and isn't really going to necessarily pay attention to you. Yeah. 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 And I th and I think and I'm going to say something a bit provocative here. And this is what I've said to her and others. And, you know, she's in the United States. She does not know what it's like to be an American emigrant with an E or an accidental American or a green card holder living overseas. And it's like a white guy telling a black guy what it's like to be black. And she has no clue, no clue at all. And but she won't listen. Yeah. And so I don't want to beat a dead horse because we have other. Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Every time I gave her, you know, I mean, the advertising services. You know, just sort of the. Yeah, I saw this. It was just, it was just a little much. The the other thing I would add too is like, well, this is what I would just say. It's the lack of curiosity about what's going on is sort of is a problem for someone who, right. you know, you you know, as as a professional, you always want to be curious about something. Like, well, why did that show up? What what's going on? And where this analogy just just falls off the rails is that, um, remember, and John, you, you know, I think you were the one pointing it out to me this first. Anthony, take a look at the, take a look at the tax code. Okay. Take a look at the regulations. Okay. Where is individual defined? And the answer is in the regulations. And so the fact is the tax code doesn't define what an individual does, the regulations do. So it's, you know, what people are not aware of are, are regulations. And that's a little bit different than, you know, something that we know is just, you know, like rape and murder are what we would call malum and say laws, not malum prohibitum, malum and say. I mean, they're bad on their face. Malum prohibitum are the red tape that you're not aware of. And there's kind of a big distinction with that. Well, well yeah. Anthony, I mean, I, I believe that you can get a, a longer jail sentence in the United States for not filing an F bar than if you murdered somebody. <laughs> it's all who depends, right? It, there's a lot, yeah. of, there's a lot of flexibility there. No, no question about it. I mean, that's, that's just, I think that ties into... Well, maybe our next our next thing I want to bring up because boy, this floored me. I kept on pinching myself when I was reading it. This is utterly amazing. Now, again, for those checking in, last last week was amazing, amazing. Belgium says we're not going to inform, information share all the FACA stuff with the United States because it's not secure. It's not, and it secure. violates the GDPR. Yeah, and it violates our European laws. We have a conflict. They were the first one. Hopefully, there'll be many. Incredible, incredible news out of Belgium. Great news for every for everyone. So this was what shocked me, perhaps even more than than what happened in Belgium. The democratic uh, Democrats abroad response. I, I still read this, and I have the first page of of it up, and I'm wondering. I'm like, did, did wait, did did John write this? John, did you write this? I, I did not. You you understand why I'm asking the question, though, right? Well, I I do, Anthony. But I mean, let's. You know, let's accept this as an extraordinarily positive development. And yeah, I think I even put a tweet up saying, you know, intelligent response to this or something. I mean, yeah. Right? And I would say this, nothing from Republicans over or, or Republic. I mean, they're, they're not very active right now. I know we've, we've there's been some great. Well, don't forget the, the Republicans have, have, you know, have seen the Treasury and did the 2017 thing, you know, in D.C., etc. But um, yeah. what struck me about the. The, uh, I think this is Democrats abroad tax, though, not Democrats abroad. I, I mean, oh, okay. The taxation task force. Yeah. So, still. I agree, still. Okay, but but let's not. I mean, I think Democrats abroad as an organization might be very, very offended. I if, think so. I don't know. They may not know it about it yet. That's sort of what I'm thinking. You know, let, let's not cause a fight here. Let's, you know, stick to Democrats abroad tax, which who I think we're right. okay, Well, they're using true. the Democrats abroad name, so I would think they would have the blessing, don't you think? I know, right? And I'm wondering. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know how the organization works, but I would yeah. not fairly assume. That. I mean, I think this is incredibly courageous uh, from the Democrats abroad tax group. But what struck me about it was, and I only read it once, but my impression from reading it was that it was very, very clear in identifying citizenship taxation as the real problem here, right? Yeah. So I read it. Do you agree with my interpretation? Yeah, exactly. That and that that I'm, I'm like, wow, they're they're you're not looking for that that carve out of same country, you know, ex exception, which is what you know we're sold as, as like, hey, that's really what you want, as, as that's that's like the gold standard. And you know, we've gone over that why that just doesn't work, and it's only creating another exception to an exception to an exception, which is just more complication. Which, what we're trying to avoid yeah um so yeah i would i i it's it i mean well this okay and this is this paragraph i if uh, i was looking for my heart emoji on the pdf to to get this one this is this is the paragraph that that just got me this is so 
I don't know who wrote this. The last paragraph? Somebody. It is the third paragraph. That's Let me read it out loud. Okay. Transition to a modern system of taxation and reporting based on physical place of residence rather than the outdated model of citizenship would increase tax revenues while addressing these problems and resolving the fundamental issues that led to the invalidation of the Belgian IGA. As further legal challenges question the legality and underlying premises of FACA throughout Europe, Democrats abroad calls upon Congress and the Treasury to provide immediate and comprehensive solutions to the problems caused by citizenship-based taxation in fact, for Americans abroad, yeah, I mean, I think that uh, that's really good. That's a very, very concise, accurate statement, and I think that yeah, let's give them a shout out for that. I got it. I got it. Absolutely. I, and I think it's that. important. As, as much as we critique them, I think we have to say this is very, very good. So, bravo. This is this is amazing, and, and you know what? I I love the paragraph right above it. I mean. This is incredibly accurate. It's very short, but incredibly accurate. It is the rich who survive with or even benefit from a broken tax code. So true. So true. They are able to afford defense lawyers. Yes. Accountants. Yes. Financial planners for compliance and investment. Oh, and they're open to tax tax shelters you couldn't dream of. They get it. They, They can do things you can't even dream of. Um, yeah. it's very, very true. And then, and and this, and this is something that I, that we're going to be hitting on next week because this is very, very true. You're talking about the rich, and I would just sort of say big, big company, more or less. They are sent education letters, inviting them to amend filings without penalties imposed on ordinary taxpayers. So true, so true. That is absolutely true. Um, and we're going to be discussing that next week um, about the results of the uh, report that the uh, uh, Treasury Inspector General did on um, large business and international at the IRS. Here, here's, here's, a, here's a little teaser. Guess who they're focusing on? And I remember, this, I remember this phrase from way back when. They are not focusing on the whales. They are no. not. Guess who they are? Oh, oh, oh yes. It's the minnows. Um, yeah, if you don't you remember in 1984, freedom and slavery. What are the three things? Freedom and slavery. What's the rest of it? War is peace, freedom is slavery, war is peace. And what was the third one? In any case, yeah. it's double think. That's a word from night. It's double think. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and here, actually, it's more than double think. It's to use language to uh, suggest the actual opposite of what you mean, which is right. what they do. We got to give, give a, a hat tip to, I mean, this is just, that is, that is a, such a concise realistic viewpoint of the absurdity of our ignorance of our is strength. it really That's is it's it's you, you know that it's really you know it's, and i was thinking about this i was thinking about this today it's like we don't really have an income tax. what we have is a tax on ignorance and lack to wealth that's what we have um yeah and the little people i think of leona oh, helmsley oh, leona oh. helmsley what did she say Taxes are for the oh, little Oh, she people. never said that she they, yeah that was a railroad job that was actually a well railroad. whatever but she that's what she, she did they needed, they needed, they needed her to be that nasty. She wasn't. Anyway, that's it. That, yeah, that's well, um, uh, that's what she said. Describe no. her up on her. I don't know. I, <laughs> um, this is just, this is just um, absolutely amazing. Let's see if we got any. Uh, we got a. Uh, yeah, there we go. Double speak there. Suzanne has it right. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is just absolutely incredible news. Um, really enjoying uh, what Democrats abroad get. There we go. I mean, I have seen some surprising thing, some things. Democrats abroad, uh, with one of the best press releases I've ever read, of a subject matter I happen to know a lot of. And you know, usually when you read something, you know, you're an expert on something. You read something, something from from someone. It's like, yeah, you know, it's as Michael Crichton would say. It's like they have the conclusion backwards. They'll say, oh, you know, wet roads cause rain. Um, this is actually incredible. You know, it's something that we're all experts on and a Democrats abroad press release is saying it like it is. Oh, Anthony, I wouldn't get too excited. Maybe it's an accident. Maybe it's coincidence. Okay. Remember the great line from the movie Goldfinger? What's that? First is happenstance. Second time coincidence. Third is time for enemy action. 
we're at the first time. This is happenstance. Mm. You get to a second one. Yeah. You know, okay. So let's, I mean, it's great. I agree. It's great, but right. I mean, I think somebody might get a, I'm afraid somebody will get a talking to. Um, Could be. that. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> it's happenstance, Anthony. It's happenstance. It's happenstance, but it's incredible happenstance here. Um, so maybe there's something going on here. That's all. What I would say is something is going on. That's that's what, uh, you know, this is, this is just sort of monumental. Um, and especially in light of Keith, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, my friend, but um, we have not seen this from uh, Democrats abroad before. And in no, the right we haven't. Not in, not to this effect. No, right. Not to this, no, we have not. We so, we, we and we would thing. hear things where they're mixing their words. We're like, yeah, you're not serious. But this is clear. This is really, really amazing. Um, now today we're going to do uh, we're going to do question and answer on F bars and hopefully people have some questions on F bars uh, ready to go. I do have some some I do do have some from this week I collected as well um, that we could get to. Um, John, do you have any F bar questions uh, that you would like to, or, or maybe we should just sort of segue into our next part, sort of where we're going here, the next story to watch. Let's do that first. What's the next story to watch here? You think on this, John, um, with with Belgium? Where, where do you think? What's next? Well, you know, this is a very interesting question. Um, you know, the it was clear that there's a, a right to appeal the decision. Um, I think that there are a lot of possibilities here, uh, a tremendous range. First of all, I don't think anything is likely to happen for quite a while. Um, I think that, um, I mean, let's imagine for a minute that uh, the decision was not appealed. Let's imagine that uh, Belgium stops sending the bad of American citizens resident in Belgium. And let's imagine, now remember, this is in the context of an existing IGA, right? So the onus would be on the United States to file a notice of noncompliance, right? You know, to create the ball, uh, the process going towards some kind of reaction. And, you know, one possibility is that maybe the United States does nothing and, you know, just essentially sort of uh, acquiesces into uh, an accidental, what I would call a same country exemption, right? And doesn't do anything about it. Uh, because here's the problem, okay, or one of the problems that let's say that the U.S. says, no, 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 you know, files a complaint. Now, to be clear, under the IGA, Belgium would have one year, right, to clean that up, one year. And that gives time for, this is written right into the IGA, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that gives time, you know, to sort of uh, figure this out. But let's say that, you know, Belgium decides, I mean, the real issue here is, does the U.S. or Belgium govern Belgium? That, at the end of the day, that's the real issue, right? Yeah. Let's say Belgium, you know, gets this idea that maybe Belgium should govern Belgium and uh, says, well, uh, you know, we're not going to send this data. And if the U.S. then uh, objects to this in a formal way uh, and then possibly, uh, you know, has the right to pull out of the IGA, then we're in a situation where it all defaults back to the statute. And will the U.S. withhold? I don't think so. Because, you know, if we look at this in a broader context, I mean, there's a lot of talk about de-dollarization and stuff like that. And I think that for the U.S. to pull out of this thing is going to illuminate this as a problem. I think it's going to get people talking about citizenship taxation, uh, you know, et cetera. So I, I, I don't know that that would happen, meaning no U.S. response. But I think it's possible, right? No U.S. response would just mean you know, all of a sudden we have a same country exemption, right? Yeah. A U.S. Yes. Yeah, yeah, here's something, though, that, that I honestly believe would thread the needle on all of this. I mean, the obvious ones, oh, well, I mean, there's plenty of ways to thread the needle. The first would be to make sure that, um, you know, to simply restrict accounts for U.S. citizens in Belgium to depository accounts that never have a balance above $50,000. Those are not reportable, right? That's the first way you could do it. Um, you know, a second way you could do it is close all U.S. citizen accounts, but I don't think you have to do that. I think all you need to do is just restrict them to depository accounts that are below $50,000. Uh, 
Uh, third thing you can do is deport all U.S. citizens. Uh, I, I think they're unlikely to do that, but it is a logical possibility. There's a lot of things you got to do to make this turkey work, huh? There's a well, lot but, of but, here, but here's a way, another way to do this. Um, and it would be this. The problem, as I see it, is FATCA, IGA, plus the saving clause in the U.S. tax treaty, where Belgium has already agreed that the United States has taxing rights, over any resident of Belgium at once just by calling him a U.S. citizen, right? Because the fact of IGA allows the U.S. and the U.S. alone to define anybody they want as a U.S. citizen. Okay, so I think, I think and a very interesting solution to this would be, and this doesn't require any amendment to a Treasury regulation, it doesn't require a change in law, would be for the U.S. to suspend, unilaterally suspend the application of the saving clause Right. In other words, their right to tax U.S. citizens in Belgium. If they were to unilaterally suspend that, then all U.S. citizens living in Belgium would be able to use the tax treaty tie break in the same way green card holders would, would be oh. non-residents and therefore would not be subject to this at all. I mean, I think it's I mean, I would prefer to get rid of citizenship taxation, but right. this is a great right. way for the U.S. to retain citizenship taxation. By God, we're going to continue sanctioning the world. With this, yeah, how much you love it? It's it's, it's the yeah, IGA stays intact, yeah. but the, the U.S. says, you know, we never really thought of that. But I think what we're going to do is just agree. We're just going to suspend, and we'll send this out. We don't even to amend the treaty. We're just going to suspend our right to the saving clause, right? And what that does is it immediately frees up U.S. citizens to use the tax treaty tie break, meaning if they have a permanent home in Belgium but not in the United States, to be treated as Belgium tax residents and not U.S. tax residents, which, you know, makes the whole problem go away. Yeah. So, Gentlemen, let's not forget that over the next couple months, similar lawsuits are being right. done in France, oh, Netherlands, yes. and Luxembourg. Hey, so let, if, they, if they go by way of Belgium, that's a big deal. And you know? I'm going to get I'm going to get up Jenny's uh, crowdfunding source for her UK lawsuit. But I just wanted to address uh, Suzanne had this had this comment. UK as well. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Susie, yeah. Yeah. You. I'll, I'll put that put, put up that link for for Jenny's uh, UK law uh, FACA lawsuit. Uh, but I just wanted to talk about Suzanne's comment on uh, you know perhaps some pr pressure that could work. Um, Belgium holds uh, 331 billion in U.S. Treasury. So I don't know if that let would be redeem, let them redeem it. Right, that's sort of the problem. So it's like now, well, 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 look with thirty percent back. Well, there's really well, geez, now that you stand to lose a hundred billion, um, there, Anthony, there cannot be any problem on this, any problem at all, because there is an existing IGA until one, the United States gives notice of noncompliance, and then there's a full yeah. year to remedy. They can right. easily yeah. get their yeah. year. Let's see here. All right, so I do want here. Here's here's the. Uh, let me get up that link to, to Jenny uh, Webster's. Uh, her, this is for her. Uh, her faculty. Uh, this is for her faculty. So, and I'll put it in the the super chat comments, so you don't have to try to type that in there. I'll put that in the comments, so you guys can uh, just click on it and don't have to type that lengthy, lengthy URL in there. Um, so there we go. Let me just show that again there. So there's yeah. there it is again. So. Um, Fantastic. So let's see what we have now. I have Keith gave me a question from over the week. Um, yeah, so, there was. So yeah, I think one thing. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so let me get that. Let me get that up right here. So Keith, this is a question you asked me earlier in the week. Uh, you had someone reach out to you that said, "Hey, look, but filed all my taxes correctly." Yeah. But I have never filed an FBAR. Exactly. Yeah. Current with his taxes, yeah. American yeah. overseas. But then he found out, oh my God, I've never filed an FBAR. What does he do? Okay, well, I have some advice. I know who not to contact. <laughs> who? Hey! Ah! Oh, da -da -da. Okay. Oh, right. you're bad. <laughs> oh, I know. I couldn't resist. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you criminal. You're not a criminal. Okay, let me just You're not a rapist. Uh, despite what you may have heard, uh, you're, you're not a criminal for, for not reporting your, your, uh, your FBAR. Um, some basic stuff about the FBAR. And I actually, I did go through um, something, an update. I went through that uh, report, uh, the LBNI audit report, and I did see 56 instances of some sort of an audit that was initiated off of some bank secrecy document. Now, it didn't say which form it was, so it could just simply be, a, you know, it could be a 105, it could be 3,800, 
or it could be an F bar because I've always told people there's never been an yeah. audit that's been initiated at, off of a filed F bar. Anthony, yes. what's a 105 and 8300 for people that don't know? What is that 105? The numbers. So, okay, yeah. So, so the so the so the uh, the FinCEN form 105 is the form. Great question. Is the form that you file when you land in the U.S. That's your customs form. So when you have more than ten thousand dollars in cash or negotiable instruments, you hand that right. over. By the way, I did have a, I have a video about that when you when you fly over uh, from from uh, Switzerland with two billion dollars or no two two million in cash, um, and I prepared a form for my client and uh, he gave that to uh, JFC, JFK Customs. They looked at that, looked at his duffel bags with two million dollars of cash, and said, "Yep, come on in." And it was the smoothest transaction he ever saw. So there's there's how you get in there. So that's so that's that could be a form, and then also the large deposit form of the thirty eight hundred form. Uh, when you're depositing large amounts of cash uh, with a bank, um, that form that's filed, most of them are completely ignored. But it, there could be, you know, again, we're talking about 50, um, not a lot. But, you know, when I say in nevers and absolutes, I want to be very careful. Um, still incredibly rare. Not sure how much. So ultimately, though, the F bar is not a form that an audit is initiated off of, except you know, there might be one or two exceptions out there. So we'll just say that. Okay, possible. Um, and the reason why is your FBAR is filed with a different entity than the actual IRS in a way. And it's a convoluted story of this form being created and it being pushed off to the IRS, the IRS pushing it back and this whole FBAR thing getting kicked around. And finally, the IRS realizes they have a whole bunch of penalties they can assess. So now the IRS wants to be in charge of assessing the penalties, although they're really not in charge of um collecting it, it goes to Detroit, which is really a different part of the U.S. Treasury, and that's where it's filed. The right. FBAR is not part of Title 31 of the Bank Secrecy Act, and so in a way, it has nothing to do with taxes. It really doesn't. Your, your bank accounts can lose money, um, and uh, it's, it's just, so it's not really part of the tax code, but it's used to augment it, and it's really used to augment it because of its massive, massive FBAR penalties right. that the, the IRS likes to accept. Now, so, what should, so the guy, what should he do? So really, in this case, it sounds like he has if something he wasn't aware of. Well, look, this is a case where everyone's you know ignorance is sort of justified. So it sounds like he has reasonable cause. And you can simply file late FBARs with an explanation why, hey, just found out of that FBARs, taxes are all compliant and have always been. Just file that in electronically. How many, when you say late FBARs, how many years back should he go? So should he you, just cold filing question. or go back? Uh, you want to do six years. Uh, you wanted six years of FBARs. Um, and that's be, there is a six-year statute of limitations on uh, assessment of FBAR penalties. Um, the IRS is in charge of that. Um, and there's also a five-year record-keeping requirement as well. Um, um, the IRS could penalize if you don't keep the records as well. So uh, that's just something to be aware of. But for the most part, you know, and John, John is the one who's really pointing out what's the value <laughs> What's the only kind of uh, F bar that's valuable to the IRS? Could, could it be the unfiled F bar? Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the only thing. A filed F bar is of no real value. Uh, how come um, they levy a penalty? That's right. Right. It's that's really look, and that's really, and, and you know, as, and again, I want, I really want to, I, I want to, um, really, we're going to be talking about this more. Uh, next week, in this, in this, John, I got to send you the link to this this report. It's, it's just, it's. It's everything we know. It's everything we know, um, and it's just fascinating to see it written out. It really is. It's really, you know, fascinating to say everything we've been saying about how the law. You know, it's like the law is a tool of the powerful to become more powerful. That's what it is. Sorry, and you know, there's a whole bunch of people in the world who don't need to worry about the code. The code is actually their sword and their shield. But then there's a whole bunch of people who do need to worry about it. And some of the things you can change and some of the things you're kind of stuck with. Um, but one thing we can absolutely do is just tell you the truth about, you know, who, who, the, uh, who the big whales are. In your case, though, in this case, though, it sounds like not a big case. It's, you have no tax noncompliance. And ultimately, um, right. the IRS themselves, the IRS employees themselves, you know, they're not coming. Most of them aren't CPAs. Most of them aren't lawyers. They're coming in maybe with an accounting background and they're just going through the IRS's training. So one of the things that you can't shake out of them is that if there's no tax noncompliance, they don't get it. 
they don't get that, oh, you can still assess this penalty. Um, so they would probably just let it go in the remote, remote case that you're selected for an examination. Now, if you are selected for an examination, um, guess what? The people that would be doing it are, are the large business and the national group, and that's really the uh, show. Uh, but that's really all it is. It's, it's something that, um, you know, this is something that uh, you would want to help with. It might to do it, but you might be able to do it yourself or with your own um, uh, help. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of research on the internet. I think I've even done a video on how to do your own uh, research. Yeah, uh, Anthony, there's... you're getting a little muffled there. Oh, I'm so sorry you know. about that. Hopefully, hopefully we're all good now. Um, let's see here. Do we have any other questions here on FBAR? So on that one, the person should just just Google delinquent FBAR information procedures. Yeah, the okay. IRS, the the IRS website. Today, as a page is going to come up that says as long as the income has been reported from yeah. the bank accounts that you've not reported, uh, they claim that you just file with an explanation. They won't assess a penalty. Okay. So, but anyway, that's where you want to start. Delinquent FBAR information procedures. And, okay. I, I will send him this podcast. And then, and, and, and also that, and be, um, that, that policy has been up for years. So it's not a new website John's telling you to go to. That's really the resource. It's very, it's been there. It's been up. If you look at, you know, how long that site, it's been up there for since 2014. So that really is the established process. So that's really it. We wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't be doing anything that much differently either. So it really could be something he could handle himself. Sounds good. Right on. All right. So do we have any more questions today on F bars? No. Let's see. Do you have any more, Keith? Did you get any more questions on F bars? No, no. That was the, that was the main one. Was you know forgetting that they even they did the file F bars. So that's good. That's good. Thank you. All right. Well, you know what? Here, here's an F bar. Here's something that that came up. Um, this, this is something that came up today. I. Um, with somebody was mentioning uh, on, on Twitter today, somebody was mentioning Elise Bean, um, the yeah. claimed writer of the uh, FACA law. Um, you know, we were there in Washington, D.C., and we watched her testimony. Um, and then I, I, um, I, I um, did a video with uh, Claudine, and we went over the 15 things she got wrong um, in her testimony. And I watched it this morning. I was like, wow, what a great video that was. Wow. Um, uh, for, so I watched that. I was impressed by, 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 by our work. Um, and second of all, it's that constant, you know, and I think this is the thing that, that was prevalent, you know, from the outset of FACA is that the, the confusion be, between FBAR and FACA and that they are actually totally separate laws. And, uh, I don't know how many times, uh, at least being the, the author of, of, uh, FACA was getting it mixed up. She was, she was getting, she was, getting that's it. right. She was. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's what, I was, that's what I was like, is she really the writer of this law? Because she never had a, you know, she never really promoted this thing. It just sort of came out of the blue, you know, an unasked law that no one really wanted, but Oh, here we had this all of a sudden. And then she was there testifying. So that was always, you know, incredibly curious to me. Um, uh, oh wait, uh, Suzanne says uh, Suzanne says Bean's book was a joke. Oh, she did have a book about it. She I had think that's right. I think that's right. Actually, could anybody uh, cite a reference to the book though? I think oh. that's right. Oh my god! Can you find it? That. Maybe somebody can go to Amazon or somewhere and she. But that's right. She wrote a book on it. I believe uh, so. Reviewing. Oh, it. Yeah. Um, well, this is uh yeah. Here I'll get. The, let me get the link up to uh, the the FACA video here. Uh, that that we did uh, really really this was enjoyable because we you know I was I yeah what Claudine and I got yelled at um, uh, during during our we were getting a little outrage and so I'm not sure who yelled at us I Jerry think. Connolly because I was making faces oh, and, uh, yeah and he stopped yeah. it and said we can't make faces yeah we're getting yeah we're getting a little bit um, right we're all we're back here we're having a little bit of fun so so I just put the video up to uh, the, the link up in the comments uh, to it I'm looking for her I'm looking for Elise Bean's book um, maybe I can find it I'm wow sure I, you know I'd forgotten it completely but I do know there there was a book yeah. Let me just see here. Oh my Maybe it's God. one of those banned books. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think this financial exposure. Oh, here it is. Financial what? exposure. Okay, here it is. Okay. 
Uh, financial exposure showcases tax misconduct by powerful individuals in in corporations. Uh, okay. It's, I got one here. Yeah. Carl Levin Senate investigations. Um, yeah. Um, care quick. There's only one left in stock, but. <laughs> Let me get that link. Let me get that link for uh, people to check yeah. out. Yeah. So found it. Oh, man. Uh, I think that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's maybe asked Suzanne, is, is that in fact the book that you mean? Or was there, was there, you write her autobiography? This is it. She says it's a lot. All right. Suzanne says it's a lovely book of fiction. So she was the most sure there. So it doesn't sound like glowing reviews. I, oh, she did do a review on it. All right. We got to find this. All right. We got to find it. All right. Well, you know, there's a saying. It, on the one hand, it's true. If you see it, you believe it. But I think when it comes to these people, it's more like they believe it. Though, so therefore, they see it. Oh, my God. OK. So, all right, so the name of the book is called Financial Exposure, Carl Levin's Senate Investigation into Finance and Tax Abuse. But the book is copyrighted 2018. So, again, I'm not sure what would. Um, I think I think I'm going to buy the Kindle version. <laughs> Oh God! All right, so we'll do a we'll do a review, so so we can look forward to that. Uh, Actually, I wonder if they'll send me a free sample. Just oh once. boy, a review free review copy. So we'll have to cover this. Your review of of how well, well you know, the Congress is, is certainly not opaque, right? And that's what uh, and during that hearing, that was I think one of the best things that we that we heard was from okay. Sarah. Yeah, it's come up here again. Um, oh my God! Now this is interesting. The Kindle edition in Canada is $66. In the U.S., it's $11. Wow. You know, that fact of compliance adds a little bit of, but, uh, you know. But uh, I just clicked deliver to my Kindle library, free sample. So hold on. All right. We are going <laughs> to. Oh, I haven't signed in. That's my problem. Hold on. They got a notification that somebody's reading it. That's their problem. What? Oh, this is amazing. All right. Well, so I want everyone to so be sure. So so we're going to be we're going to have our next. So next week, we're going to be covering um, the IRS's uh, audits and how it's actually how large business and international, how they're actually going after the easiest targets and how they're avoiding those large multinational corporations and going after the easier people. Um, the most experienced examiners, the IRS's most experienced examiners are going after the smallest people. Um, imaginable because they're cases they can actually close out and assess. Uh, 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 um, uh, oh, so Suzanne, uh, uh, Suzanne, uh, Suzanne says uh, her Amazon. Anyway, back to her. Amazon refused to publish her review. Uh, so hopefully she. Uh, oh man, is that so right? Like, That's very. Anyway, great news, everybody. Uh, I was able to log into Amazon, and my free sample is there for me. All right, so we look, can look forward to that. All right, so join us next Thursday uh, where we are really going to go over how the IRS actually works. And, and really, I, I think um, it, in really reiterating, just let me finish with, you know, again, with, with, my, with uh, this great paragraph from Democrats abroad here, you know, that really, that what we're looking at, you know, it's really the, the rich who survive with or even benefit from a broken tax code. Um, and the powerful is what I would say. The powerful. Tell me, Anthony, have have you been persuaded to vote for the Democrats by this now? I mean, wow. Well, I no one's really on your side. I mean, I think that's what I've. But, but my question I'm is: Is this you to vote for the Democrats? I'm going to vote for no one. That's what I. That I. They they have convinced me. I always was one of those people like, oh no, you got to vote for someone. No, I'm I'm convinced. Like, no, don't for no, no, because you're going to believe that they could provide more solutions than problems, and that's just the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Uh, so with that, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Uh, oh, and then Suzanne just has one final warning for you. We'll leave it with this. John, better have some good, strong drink when reading it. You know what? I quit drinking years ago, so I'll just have <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and we'll see you next time.